So we're here today to make a series of short ETF videos introducing college chairs to interesting stories from across the FE world that might be useful in leading their boards. So Stevenson College is well known for its work on apprenticeships. Can you tell us a bit more about that please? Uh, yes, for, for a number of years now we've uh, identified apprenticeships as being a government priority uh, and as a consequence we try to align ourselves with the initiatives that government are steering us towards and as a result we've recruited a number of apprentices over the years, predominantly from some large employers, around STEM subjects, so science, technology, engineering and math subjects and we've had a degree of success with that. We were fortunate enough in 2018 to be named the Times Education Supplement Employer Engagement College of the Year and that's an accolade we're very proud of. How typical is your work on apprenticeships would you say? I think our college is uh, disproportionately represented in the apprenticeship world compared to a lot of other colleges uh, because we have more apprentices in our building than we have study programme students which is relatively unusual and we deliver 99% of the apprenticeships that we uh, recruit ourselves and we don't subcontract the provision at all. What are the advantages of having apprenticeships so central to your model and what are the drawbacks would you say? I think one of the advantages that we find when we have a large number of apprentices in the building is that they create a, a relatively work-like atmosphere and so some of the study programme students benefit from seeing some of their other students in the building maybe behaving in slightly different ways and we feel that it creates a calm and more mature atmosphere within the building. Uh, so that's one of the main benefits that we find. Obviously there are other pragmatic benefits as well because the uh, proportion of apprenticeships that we do specifically in the subjects that we, we deliver the programmes create relatively well-funded provision. So over the recent number of years where some of the demographics haven't supported necessarily study programme students coming through to colleges, we've been able to offset some of those difficulties through diversifying our income streams with some of the apprenticeship programmes that we, we recruit to. So that's another way in which it, it's been a relatively positive uh, thing from, from our point of view. So many colleges struggle to increase their volumes on apprenticeships. How has your college managed to get to the point where it's so central to what you do? I think, I think some colleges have struggled to increase the number of apprentices they recruit to their, their provision. And our experience has been one where we've tried to embark on a long-term strategy in relation to the recruitment of apprentices. We've built relationships with a number of companies and the relationships have, have been based on trust and mutual respect and we have genuine partnerships with the companies that we work with. I think the, the sort of analogy we would use would be we, we consider this a, a marriage rather than a speed dating exercise. Um, over the years the influence that the companies have in relation to the college has been something that has increased and we've recognised that in a genuine partnership, the college needs to embrace the companies within the facilities that we have here, respect the amount of investment they make in the building and in the human resource. And really, it's been a culmination of, of, of a different range of activities that have led us to the position that we've, we, we actually occupy at the moment. But this is, this is something that's really decades in the making. In terms for things for chairs to think about, what are the board and governance angles, would you say? I think one of the things for chairs and boards to consider is the way in which employers are represented throughout the corporate structure of a college. At our college, we have governor representatives from a range of large companies. We also have representatives from the Institute of Civil Engineers who play a part in our board. And their representation is also reflected in other areas of our college. A number of the apprenticeship programmes have steering groups and the steering groups contain members of the employers that we work with along with obviously colleagues of mine from the college. So the representation of employers throughout the organisation structure we think is key and that has served us well over the years. Finally, putting apprenticeships at the heart of the college may not be the right strategy for every college. How would you say a board can best work out whether it should or shouldn't be going down this road? 
Well, I think it, it's for every college board to determine whether or not it wishes to go down the route of, of recruiting apprenticeships. But our experience at Stevenson College has been to try to create as diversified a range of programmes as possible to which we can recruit students. Uh, I think it's probably fair to say within that range, apprenticeships should be considered. And I suppose the question is not whether or not to do apprenticeships, but maybe the proportion of apprenticeships that a college considers delivering. That's often determined by local circumstances, um, but in our experience, the key is to make sure whatever apprenticeship programmes you deliver are delivered to the highest quality standard. And that often takes a little bit of time. And so it is something that we would encourage people to be involved in, but recognise that this isn't a short-term fix and it is a medium-term strategy.